Developing now, reaction to stunning new claims that the TWA Flight 800 disaster was no accident. 17 years ago next month, that Boeing 747 plane went down over Long Island after taking off from New York's JFK airport en route to Paris. All 230 people on board died. In the wake of the tragedy, investigators painstakingly reconstructed the plane from the wreckage recovered in the Atlantic Ocean, all while a range of theories swirled about what really brought the flight down. The official reason ultimately given for the crash, a gas tank explosion. But now a new documentary features several former investigators involved in this case, men who worked on this case, who say that is flat out wrong, and they are alleging that there was a cover-up. There was a structural piece of the aircraft lying on the floor that had three holes blown through it like a 22 through a tin can with an obvious entrance and exit side of the penetration. I was about to take a picture of it and somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, don't take that picture. And I said, well, who are you to tell me not to take the picture? And he said, FBI. Because Jim wasn't allowed to take a picture of that part. He looked around the hangar and found other parts with similar holes. And, you know, I'm looking at this and I just don't know how these could occur normally in a fire. What would your analysis have been? The, the primary, primary conclusion was the, the explosive forces came from outside the airplane, not the center fuel tank. Joining me now, Tom Stalkup. He's co-producer of the TWA Flight 800 documentary. And joining us by phone is Jim Kallstrom. He's the former lead FBI investigator in this crash. Gentlemen, thank you both very much for being here. Jim, if I could start with you by phone, because you are featured heavily in the documentary, although did not participate in it. And, um, you know, you're at the center of a lot of these allegations because the, a lot of these NTSB guys believe it was the FBI who covered this up. They are suggesting, although not coming right out, uh, and saying that this was more likely the result of a missile that took down this flight, and they suggest that the FBI and others work to cover that up. Your thoughts? Well, it's a crazy idea. There's nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, we, we turned over uh, heaven and earth, uh, particularly for the missile uh, theory. The FBI thought there was a good chance a missile would be shot at the airplane. We knew there were man pad missiles left all over the world, stolen from National Guard armories, et cetera, et cetera. So the thousand agents I had working on this matter at the peak, we had at least a hundred that were looking at the missile theory. And we brought in experts from China Lake and from Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Those are the experts that, that uh, are the missile experts for the United States military. Uh, we had some experts at MIT. I brought in special uh, metallurgists. Uh, the former head metallurgist for Alco or aluminum, and of course our metallurgy and NTSB's met metallurgy team. We looked at every piece of that airplane multiple times uh, by all those different category of experts. We knew all about different missiles and how they explode, the type of warheads that, that could be used, and uh, we followed that to the end, believe me. Mm -hmm. And, and I had a vested interest in this investigation, not because I was the head of the FBI. This is a picture of you. Because one of my dearest friend's wife died on that airplane. Understood, Jim. And this is a picture of you uh, holding up a piece of aluminum, you, you showing that you did conduct some tests trying to see what it would look like if a missile had hit the aircraft. I want to bring in Tom and ask you, Tom, you're a physicist who just took a citizen's interest in this case and then really began following it. And you hooked up with these NTSB guys, six of them, who were on the investigation. They're not random NTSB guys. They were, they were on this crash uh, investigating it, and they believe, as you do, that this was not a gas tank explosion. Your response to what we just heard from the former FBI director who was on the case. Uh, sure. Uh, they did look for evidence of a missile. That's true. Uh, but the main thing they were looking at were pitting and things that happen when the missile explodes very close to the metal. What there was evidence of, which they neglected to, to focus on, was evidence of a missile exploding some distance from the aircraft aircraft that would not leave those signatures that a bomb or a missile would, would if it exploded near the aircraft. Now there were holes uh, directed into the fuselage from the outside in, that's documented. Uh, some had high velocity characteristics, characteristics that's documented. Uh, Richard Bott from China Lake did come out just like uh, Mr. Carlson said 
and he said, well, you know, there is evidence consistent with a missile diving down above the aircraft and coming down near the left, the left wing, but he, I just can't imagine that happening. That, that's what he says in his report. Mm -hmm. But in fact, that's what the witnesses said. There's, a, there's, a, there's an object that came uh, from Flight 800's left side, uh, from above, went down, and exactly consistent with Richard Bott of China Lake that did come out and look at this wreckage. Jim, I want to ask you, because this is a clip from the documentary in which they play some of your statements about what witnesses said on the subject of was there a missile. And then they play a bit of a CIA animation that suggested you know, the plane broke, the nose came off, and then the body of the plane continued to ascend. And the film calls that cartoonish and not possible. I want to show this clip and get you to react to it. There were about 200 people uh, that saw events in the sky that they described, none of which described the missile. Just after the aircraft exploded, it pitched up abruptly and climbed several thousand feet from 13,800 feet to about 17,000 feet. Those who said they saw something ascend and culminate in an explosion probably saw the burning aircraft ascend and erupt into a fireball, not a missile. Not a missile. Never was, never will be. So the CA video, what, what do you think of that? It's a nice cartoon. Did you happen to watch the CIA animation about what happened? Yes, I did. And what did you think about that animation? Well, that animation didn't resemble anything that I saw in any way whatsoever. And again, for our viewers, because Jim is with us by phone, that is, you are the FBI investigator featured in the, that clip. Uh, this is the first you've had the chance to react to it. Your thoughts? Well, Megan, you know, that's 17 years ago, and I'm on a cell phone here, so I don't see, the, see it. Of course, I remember uh, the animation. And whether it's uh, amateurish or not is irrelevant. There was no evidence of a missile hitting the plane. We fired all types of missile warheads at carcasses uh, that were uh, out west in, in the graveyards where airplanes go. So we could have a, a database of what this type of damage looked like, missiles outside and missiles inside. And uh, at my last meeting on this, all the experts came in from the military. All of our metallurgists came in. Uh, all the other people came in, and uh, I said to them, look, is there something we're missing here? Is there something that uh, that can't be seen or, uh, you know, we should take further investigation? And the answer was no by everybody. So uh, it was a preponderance of, of experts, and and uh, believe me, we uh, left no rock uh, unturned on this thing. And uh, whether or not someone liked the animation or whether some eyewitness uh didn't see what he thought he should see. Eyewitness testimony is usually terrible to begin with. I don't use that as an excuse. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. So in the bottom, the bottom line is, you know, where did this new evidence come from? The plane is still in the hangar. Uh, and somebody should go and uh, show the NTSB what you're talking about. Tom, it's, it's all been looked at numerous times. Let me get you to weigh in on, on that, Tom. Yeah, sure. Um, well, uh, with, all due, uh, excuse me, with all due respect, Mr. Kallstrom, uh, you did order that CIA animation to replace the actual witness testimony. You wrote a letter to the NTSB three days before their first public hearing on the crash, three weeks after that animation re was released, specifically requesting the NTSB chairman not allow any eyewitness to come and testify. To date, not a single eyewitness out of 670 that your investigators located have ever testified publicly on this. Why did you hire the CIA to create this obviously falsified uh, animation which showed an aircraft climbing, which is physically impossible? It's actually impossible based on the radar evidence. If you're going to climb that sharply, that plane's going to have to slow down, just like when you ride a bicycle up a hill. The radar data shows no reduction in airspeed. How are you going to get that climb? It's not going to happen. So the plane didn't climb. It turned left and went down, as our animation shows. The eyewitnesses, if you want to really tell the world what the eyewitnesses saw, let them testify. That's what you should have done back in 1997, and I think you should request that that's done right now. Jim, I'll, I'll let you weigh in on that, and, and I'd also I like you to quickly weigh in on why, what, in, why would there be a conspiracy to cover this up? <laughs> you know, I don't know, Megan. And if, if these NPSB investigators were on site and they had problems with 
you know, these are separate agencies. We do criminal investigations, NTSB does, you know, mechanical, pilot, whatever, non-criminal things. If they have problems with their chief engineers and, you know, they certainly could have uh, come to me. Or they could have been real men and been whistleblowers back then when, if they wanted to prove their conclusions, we could have actually done something about it, not 17 years later. Yeah. Now that they've got their government pensions and they feel safe, you know, I, I think just the, it's a crazy idea. And I partic- it's particularly offensive to me that this is coming forward now, not from the standpoint of whether it's, it's uh, incorrect or correct. I know it's incorrect, but in particular, the families that went through hell on this thing, the families that we, we were totally bonded with, including uh, the young lady that I was in her wedding, and her husband was an agent that worked with me, uh, in the FBI office. So the notion that I would cover up something, and uh, I don't recall telling NDSB not to uh, not to interview anybody. They could interview whoever the hell they want to interview. It's a Understood. separate agency. Understood. And I, I want to tell they, our viewers, and, I, and there's so much more to say, Tom, and, and the, the documentary is fascinating, although, you know, Jim would say incorrect, but it is fascinating. It's fascinating, and, just like the world, Walt Disney's fascinating. <laughs> so he's still with us, but Folks can check it out. They can hear uh, Tom's full theory, and it's not just Tom. It's the NTSB investigators he interviews as well. It's going to be on uh, July 17th, the anniversary of the crash, 8 p.m. on the cable network, uh, EPIX. We 